Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Kalhauge, and uh, oh, no, 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 no. We go back. There we go. Okay. Let's rewind. Okay. My name is Christian Kalhauge, and I'm um, uh, I've, I'm here to present uh, sound deadlock prediction, uh, which is uh, work which I've done in collaboration with uh, Jens Passberg, and uh, uh, I'm now happy that we've pretty much gone through the whole. Uh, um, a data race uh, section thing, so that I can kind of build on that going forward. Um, because what we essentially did, and the three things that I want you to take away from this talk, except for maybe just read my paper, um, is um, that we took a, um, a data race um, uh, model, especially the s and uh, uh, solver kind, and then we uh, extended uh, its consistency model with a, a data flow model, and that enabled us to find more uh, deadlocks and also data races. We also um, uh, added request events and ex uh, executability constraints to their, their, um, their solver mechanism, and that enabled us to find deadlocks at all. And, um, we, are not, uh, and we also guarantee with a proof that we find only true uh, deadlocks. Um, so, but let's start with an example. So given that you have uh, two uh, accounts, a and B, and you run them in parallel like this. You transfer five dollars uh, from A to B, and uh, B uh, transfers uh, uh, five dollars to A, and you run them in parallel, and suddenly it deadlocks, and you don't know, uh, it doesn't complete, and you're frustrated, and you want to be done with work for today. <laughs> so you want to look at the source code first. And in, in this case, we have um, a simple um, class. It has one field and two synchronized methods. In Java, synchronization means that no two threads can access the, the same object's synchronized methods. So this is essentially ensured using locks, and this is where the deadlocks uh, come, into the, uh, come into play. So in, in our example here, A transfer $5 to B, what would, would happens by first subtracting five from its balance, and then uh, calling a, a deposit on B, and then um, adding $5 to, uh, with, which B then adds uh, the $5 to its balance, and then vice versa. So that interaction uh, looks like this if you look at it in a dynamic way. So um, what first happens is that uh, thread one to enter uh, the, the transfer method would uh, have to request A, then acquire A, which it can do because no other um, uh, threads have at this point uh, don't hold the lock of A, so that we, we can get it. We do the same thing for uh, B. First request B, then we acquire B, and then we do some work. And then uh, accessing the deposit function, we release B, and accessing the transfer fu function, we release A. And the same thing happens in the opposite order for, um, for B, or oh, threat two. Uh, notice that we are, uh, we are allowed to acquire B over here because thread one has already released um, B. So this is a good example of something that didn't went wrong, but how would it look like if it went wrong? So if you run them in parallel, we can have this other case where first uh, thread one requests A, then it acquires A, then it do, does some work, it gets preempted. Thread two starts requesting a, a, B, still allowed, so it gets uh, the lock. Then uh, some computation happens, and it uh, uh, ends up with the uh, uh, request. And the request essentially um, it requests A, and it can't get it because thread one is now uh, currently acquiring it, and we would have to wait until it releases it. So uh, thread two then uh, hands over uh, the execution to thread one, that then tr tries to um, uh, request <laughs> uh, B, and that has already been acquired by thread one, and we are now in a deadlock. So. This is the basic example. I will kind of uh, push forward through the whole, the whole talk. So let me just talk a little bit about uh, the dynamic deadlock detection uh, as, a, as a base. So it, it normally works in three stages. First, we uh, uh, log a history. 
then we um, do some very hard thinking about the problem, and then we predict some, some, uh, some possible candidates. And then um, we verify the candidates by re-executing the program. But there's just one problem, and that is that re-execution is hard. There's a lot of really good tools that call fusses, and they do an amazing job of actually executing uh, uh, these things afterwards. Uh, but it requires that you keep the state of the program as you ran it the first time very consistent. You, uh, and and like if you have to track if, if uh, you download things from the internet or events happens or the file system changes. So all of these things you have to kind of keep very consistent if you want to re-execute. So our whole uh, idea is to take a, a page out of the, uh, of the, the data race um, detection uh, business and then say, why do we have to rerun at all? We can actually, couldn't we just like uh, just predict soundly the candidates? So if all the candidates are real bugs, we don't have to re-execute. Um, so let me just iterate the uh, the uh, the deadlock prediction problem. There would then be take the history we got uh, from running the program that didn't fail, and then um, through some uh, uh, solving, we want to end up in in some other history that actually contains a bug. And the important part, and this is what makes uh, a prediction uh, uh, system sound, is that uh, every um, uh, history that is predicted is re-executable in the, um, the old history. So that's at least our definition of sound going forward. Um, so. The first thing to kind of be able to prove soundness in this world would then be to have a model of what is re-executable. And in the data race um, uh, literature, they use uh, a name con called consistency, and that essentially means that no matter what we did to the program, uh, to the history, we can still re-execute the history in the program if it's consistent. Um, from the, the SAID paper, uh, Generating Data Race Witnesses by SMT-Based Analysis, which is one of the first uh, tools for doing SMT-based uh, data race, sound SMT-based uh, uh, data race analysis, they said uh, that all read events read from a write event with the same value. And this really makes sense because you want, uh, like if, a, if you read something and it might, it might affect something else and you might not uh, be able to execute the history afterwards. So if we take our example, it turns out to not be consistent. And it's because of the, the, the read value up here reads 15, and, and uh, it reads from the, uh, the 15 down here in the, uh, in the right in thread one. So using the consistency description from SAID, we can't really call this consistent or re-executable. But it turns out that we can actually re-execute it because the 15 is never used uh, after. It's first used uh, when we actually want to uh, deposit the money into uh, A's account. So we can actually uh, ignore this. And this is what, uh, what happened in uh, Huang's paper, Maximal Sound Predictive Data Race uh, Detection, which was um, essentially the, it's the paper behind RB Predict, which we heard about before. And it says that um, you only have to really make sure that a read reads that value if it can affect the control flow. But the problem is that, well, this kind of helps it, but we're not right there yet because we still have a problem here, because this 15 might have affected the A. And even though there's no control flow uh, uh, elements between the two things, um, that A might actually uh, be, um, it could be 15 if it was a C pro program, then if it was a pointer you were, you were kind of locking, then in that case it would be, um, it, it would be very bad if the read suddenly read something else, like another lock then we wouldn't find this deadline. Uh, we would, we would uh, still find it, but we would find a wrong one. So what we essentially want to model <laughs> is that there is a, a, a connection between the 15 and the A, or if there is, or if we can guarantee there is not one. And we did that using a, a, a data flow predicate, which um, over approximates the amount of data flow you can do in a, in a um, um, that, that can happen in, a, a, in any uh, history or a program. Um, so in this case, we can see that um, the V, the capital V, would be all the values of all events that comes after that needs to be executed. And the X would be the value of the read that you're reading. And in this case, with X being 15 and V be, being only the set of A, 
uh, in that case, in Java, we have the, uh, the cool fact that, that any integer can never be turned into an object. So with that in mind, we can actually um, uh, we can say that that actually does not affect the request event. And, um, and we can say that this is still consistent. So essentially, we update and weaken the consistency model so that uh, we are saying that all read and write events read from a uh, uh, well, read events need to read from a write event with the same value, but only if the value is needed later, where needed later is defined by this uh, uh, data flow predicate. Okay. Also, we require that locks are well behaved, and that means that any threat uh, that um, releases a lock can only release a lock that is acquired itself. And this is very important if you want to detect sound uh, deadlocks because um, Imagine that you, uh, you find a deadlock and then another thread just releases it like two events later and then, uh, then you're back at running. Um, so, so what we want, uh, so, yeah, so this is actually um, completely embedded in Java, so it's not a problem, but if you were doing the same project for C, for example, you would have to instruct your users not to, to do that. Uh, at least say that you, it's not sound if that happens. Okay, so now we have found essentially a consistency model, something that we, we defined as consistent and re-executable. So now we just want to build, essentially uh, solve, it, uh, solve uh, and, and, and get the results. So again, we take the page out of the uh, data race uh, community here where we say, uh, they essentially say that uh, given a lock, I can use this SMT solver and an equation, and then I can get a uh, permuted um, history that, um, uh, that then can produce a data race and they can then prove that this data race will always be consistent. Um, our history is there that will always be consistent. And then we ask, can we do the same thing, just with a little bit of changes to our uh, consistency model? And that just turns out to be not the case. And, and, and the key is kind of supple uh, in the sense that, that um, the data race tools do a permutation. And as we see here, a permutation of this history um, the acquire events of B and uh, acquire of A are not executable. They are by definition not executable because it's a deadlock. So the whole history, or the history as a whole, would never be executable. So what we need to do is that we uh, first we added request events. Uh, the, the the cool thing about the request events is that they uh, still constitute a deadlock by existing and being parallel, but uh, if con conditions apply. Um, if, um, uh, but, but, but they can be executed in the program, even if there is a deadlock. And the other part that we had to, to ensure here was that um, all events, um, that, that, that the, the solver essentially was able to remove events and prefix the history uh, while solving. Um, and that's the only way that we can really ensure that this is actually um, uh, uh, consistent when it gets out in the other end. So, again, uh, request events and executability constraints are the important things here. And uh, essentially, the new solution is that we lock a program, we uh, have a solver that can now permute and prefix, and then we, um, we, we have a, a thing that can both detect data traces and deadlocks. So our implementation is a, um, a tool called Wiretap that uh, locks all the events from uh, bytecode into a binary history, which we then uh, read by our predictor called Dirk, which um, uh, detects deadlocks and data races and uses three, the C3. Um, both of these things have been artifact evaluated and they are available on GitHub. So if you want to try them out, please be very welcome. Um, first, we did an evaluation to, uh, with data races to check if our consistency um, uh, was enhanced or weakened by the, uh, uh, the deadlock, uh, um, I don't know, the data flow um, predicate. And uh, we designed a counter example that was actually, uh, that, were, that, um, that Arby predict was never able to detect. Um, uh, and then we also, uh, on, on most of the cases we ran, um, on average, uh, over 100 runs, we, we, we detected a little bit more data races. And then some examples we, um, we timed out because of the more expensive uh, executability event, uh, events and uh, executability constraints and uh, the data flow model. Um, so uh, we also did an evaluation with deadlocks. 
that was probably a good idea. Uh, we ran uh, it on 11 programs, uh, which are listed in, in, in the paper, and all the decapo benchmarks, and uh, a lot other um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, programs, but we, we did never find a false positive. Um, we also ran against uh, Deadlock Fossa, which is a, f uh, a fussing tool. Okay, and um, essentially, um, we are, on small benchmarks, we are faster, and um, there exist examples where we can find a deadlock that the deadlock faster cannot, and that's uh, maybe because it's too hard to execute, uh, or there's too many locks involved. Then there's examples where we are just slightly better, and th th those examples have, are based on uh, probably being uh, very hard to direct the execution, uh, execution in, the, uh, in the right order, uh, right yeah, direction. And then finally, there are some examples that we can't uh, predict, and that's uh, the limitation of being sound, and also that um, we have um, the problem that we only have one run to, uh, to go from, and uh, we have to uh, maintain the control flow between uh, things. Uh, we also uh, ran, we got uh, deadlock faster to run on some uh, Decapo benchmarks, and on those uh, benchmarks, we were uh, seven times slower than deadlock faster and 250 times slower than, than running. So this is not a fast algorithm uh, on, on large uh, uh, benchmarks, but um, yeah, it's still, it, it's sound. <laughs> and um, so let me just go over the points one more time. Um, we did a sound uh, deadlock predictor, which uh, with a weak consistency model allowed us to find uh, more data races and more uh, uh, deadlocks uh, than, or just or find deadlocks than, um, uh, than current uh, work. We also uh, added request events and executability constraints, which uh, enable us to find deadlocks at all. And finally, we're, uh, we're only finding true deadlocks. So um, thank you very much, and uh, please read the paper or ask questions now or later. I'm uh, very happy to answer them. Okay. Let's thank Kristen. Do we have questions? So for race detectors, people have taken prototype tools and applied them to huge corpuses, because why not? Yeah. Um, for deadlock, nobody's done that. Have you thought about it? Are you willing to spend a year of machine time to see if there's anything interesting happening in any Apache products? Um, <laughs> if I'm willing to spend my machine time, uh, probably not, but it's uh, available and you're, you're will, uh, you, you can uh, run it yourself. <laughs> That's why we're asking, you know? <laughs> you, could, you could show the value of your tool to a large audience. <laughs> Um, I will think about it. With only some cost to climate change. Yeah. Small, small cost. Yeah. Okay, that's a, uh, okay, it's a long story, but essentially um, a pick lock in Danish is, uh, is Dirk. Uh, Dirk, you know, a small knife. Uh, it's, it's used for that, and we thought it was funny <laughs> because nobody would understand. <laughs> okay, any final question? Then let's ta thank Christian again. <laughs> and have a good break.